A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <coughs> video. Today, a webby. Ve Oh, did, did I sound British? Today, <laughs> a very, very fun one from... Hey, that's where I come from. G Germany. From the Mass Olympia 2001. We need to find all the real Q such that the roots of this quartic polynomial are in arithmetic progression. It's a very fun one. I loved solving it and I hope you are going to enjoy it too. Give it a try for yourself and when you're ready keep watching the solution for the keep keep watching the video for the solution. I'm being fucking retarded today. Never mind. By the way, have you checked out Flemmy's Wood, my woodworking channel, posting some very lit content over there at the moment. Also in my building a DIY shed video, you can see Papa half naked last summer. Very sweaty. So check it out, <laughs> link down there in the description. And then we're going to dive right in. So um First thing I would like to do is to actually find out the roots of this quartic polynomial. And the cool thing about this polynomial is that it's a so-called, I don't think there's a very English English name for this type of polynomial, but in German we call it a biquadratische Gleichung. What it means is that we basically take the um, square of a quadratic polynomial, you could say. So we get x squared squared minus 40 x squared plus q times x squared to the zero of power. What the consequence of this is, is that we can basically reduce this to a quadratic polynomial at first by introducing a simple substitution. So let for example z be equal to x squared. This makes it very easy for us to find out the roots of this polynomial. Um, this is like Polynomials of this kind are being covered in like 11th grade here in Germany um, as a very standard question for the so-called Abitur. So yeah, um, everyone here is familiar with this type of equation. But other than that, if we plug this new substitution in, we're going to get z squared and then we're going to get minus 40 z and plus q is equal to zero. And yeah, this is very easy to solve. Just make use of the quadratic formula, giving us the two solutions for z being respectively equal to, okay, negative and negative is positive, 40 over two is 20. Plus or minus the square root of 20 squared is going to give us 400 and then minus q. And do you know what the cool thing is? Those are two solutions at the moment, but this is only for the quadratic. We have reduced the quartic, a quartic, gives us four real roots in the best case. Meaning we still know what z is. z is always equal to x squared, but we are going to get two branches respectively for every branch of x, basically. So one, two. So we can solve this by taking the square root on both sides. Meaning we are going to get four possible solutions by taking the positive or negative square root and then alternating basically our branches. We are going to get the first solution x1 being equal to, okay, let's take the positive branch square root of 20 plus the square root of 400 minus q. For the outer square root, we're going to take the positive branch once again and for the inner square root, this time the negative branch, giving us x2 being equal to the square root of 20 minus the square root of 400 minus q. Okay, next up, x3, I think you get the drill. We're going to get negative the square root of 20 plus the square root of 400 minus q. And last but not least, we're going to get x4 being equal to negative the square root of 20 minus the square root of 400 minus q. So we found out all of our roots. Now, do you see a certain connection between all of these roots? Because I certainly do. If we take a look at x3, for example, and this is an intrinsic property of those b quadratische Gleichung, basically. It just has to do with the positive and negative branches of the respective square root that we are going to take. x3 is the same as negative square root of 20 plus blah blah blah. The square root of 20 plus blah 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 is x1. Meaning x3 is the same as negative x1. And analogously we get that x4 is equal to negative x2 because the square root right here is the same as up here. Okay, those are our two main branches that we got here, meaning we are just going to take the alternating branch. Okay, this right here is a very cool relationship, but we are still not done because all of those roots that we got right here, we need to solve for Q in the process. It's an unknown. Need to be in so-called arithmetic, arithmetic, I think it's arithmetic progression. 
what does it mean for something to be an arithmetic progression? Well, it does mean that, let me just give you an example for the people not familiar yet. This right here is um, a sequence in arithmetic progression. All the consecutive members are always one unit apart because on one we are going to add one to get to two. We are going to add one to get to three and we are going to add one to get to four. Another example, um, zero, three, no, zero, 69, 138 and so on. Can you see what the basically step size here is on the arithmetic progression? I'll give you a hint, it's plus 69 and so on. Meaning, if you want all of those roots to be an arithmetic progression, then they must be of the form, for example, um, in order for us to get to x1, we need to add some certain step size n to our x2. In order for us to get x2, we need to add a certain amount of n, the same step size, on x3, and so on. But at first, before we can get started with this, we need to basically put an order relation on all of those roots, such that we know in which order we are going to add our steps, okay? All of those consecutive numbers are always ordered in some kind of way. One is bigger than the other. So let's establish an order relation for our roots. Now, the cool thing about square roots is that they are monotonically increasing. So meaning if the argument is bigger on one of the two, if we compare those, then the whole square root is also going to be bigger. Now, it's very easy to see that x1 is going to be the biggest value. On the one hand, because we got negatives here, so the positive print is always going to be bigger. Now we just need to compare these two. And the argument in here on x1 is always going to be bigger than the argument in here because we are going to take something away from 20 and here we are always going to add something on 20, making this argument bigger, meaning x1 is always strictly greater than x2, at least in arithmetic progression. Now what is next order relation? We can go the same route here. Now the thing is, if we ignore the negative signs here, just an absolute values, then x3 by the same argument is always going to be bigger than x4. But let's just imagine that this number right here is six and this is five. If we now put a negative sign in front, we are going to get that negative five, oh, is actually bigger than negative six. Meaning, conversely, that x4 is bigger than x3, but smaller than x2. Um, yeah. This right here is our order relation and we know what x4 and x3 are. Um, we have found out that they are always in connection with our x1 and x2. Namely x3 is equal to negative x1 and x4 is equal to negative x2. And now, just as mentioned before, they need to be in arithmetic progression. Since x1 is the biggest, we need to add something on x2 in order for us to get to x1. Meaning we can pull out a system of equations here, you could say. We are going to get to x1 if we add some certain number n, some step size on x2. Same argument, if we add a certain number n, the same step size on x4, we are going to get to number um, x2. And in order for us to get to x4, I think you get the drill, we are going to add the number n on x3. But don't forget, we also have certain other relations going on here. Namely that x3 is the same as negative x1. And we have that x4 is the same as negative x2. And now, don't forget your n, Jens. And now we can start solving for, for example, the roots. And once we solve for two roots, we can solve a system of equation which is going to let us isolate for q. This is at least the uh, um, route I took. The easiest one to um, isolate here, the, the root is this one at first, because we can just add x2 on both sides, giving us that um, 2 x2 is equal to n, or equivalently we have that um, x2 is the same as n over 2. Okay, let us solve for another root, shall we? For example, for this one right here, because we can plug our continuous steps in one after another. We know what x2 is. x2 is x4 plus n. So plugging this into here, we're going to get x4 plus n plus n, which is x4 plus 2n. Which does make perfect sense if you think about it, because in order for us to get to x1, we need to add n to x4 to get to x2 and then adding another n to get to x1. And if we apply this argument once again or 
just plugging the definition for x4 into here, we are going to get that um, x1 is finally equal to x3 plus, and in our case, 3n. But we know what x3 is. x3 is the same as negative x1. Okay, this is what we got up here. Meaning overall, we get another equation out of this long snack of um, equivalence relations. We are going to get that x1 is finally equal to negative x1 plus 3n. And we can start solving for our x1 in the process. We are going to get 2x1 is equal to 3 times n, dividing both sides by 2 is going to give us x1 is equal to 3n over 2. Let me rewrite this differently. I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times n over 2. Why am I rewriting it like this? Um, I was solving it differently before, but then it struck me, struck me like lightning because it makes matters way easier. Um, we know what n over 2 is. n over 2 is just x2. I Meaning the cool thing about x1 is that it's also equal to 3 times x2. Oh, cool. But we know what x1 and x2 are. They are defined as being the roots of the quadratic polynomial, meaning we can plug our x's in. So x1, I have it down here, is the same as the square root of 20 plus the square root of 400 minus q is equal to three times. And now we get the same thing just with the negative branch in here. So, uh, square root of 20 minus the square root of 400 minus q. And now it's easy for us to solve this thing. We can square both sides, giving us overall that, okay, we are going to square product here. So square the first thing, this is nine, and square the second thing, square root, or square over square root is just the argument in and of itself, giving us 20 plus the square root of 400 minus Q on this side is equal to nine times um, 20 minus the square root of 400 minus Q. And yeah, if we distribute our nan into here, we are going to get that 20 plus the square root of 400 minus q is the same as 180 minus nan times the square root of 400 minus q. And now it's very easy for us to solve all of this because what we can do is we can add the nan times square root of blah, blah, blah on both sides, giving us 10 times the square root of blah, blah, blah. And subtracting 20 on both sides gives us 160, meaning that 160 is equal to um, 10 times the square root of 400 minus Q. Now we can divide both sides by 10, giving us in the process that 16 is equal to the square root of 400 minus q. And now you can see that everything unfolds nicely. By taking the square, we are going to get that 16 squared is equal to 400 minus q. 16 squared, 16 is two to the fourth power times two to the fourth power is two to the eighth power. So this is 1024, 512, 256. So 400 minus q is equal to 256, meaning we can add q on both sides. We can subtract 256 on both sides, giving us the final solution that q is equal to um, 144. QE fucking d, I would say. Now you can plug this into here. And this polynomial is going to give you four roots in arithmetic progression. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to do more competitive mathematics, if you're interested in more algebra, number theory, and all of this crazy stuff, then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor brain, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now that was smooth. I think my solution was pretty damn good. Um, I don't know about you, there are other ways to solve something like this, but I think um, everything after um, basically this part right here was just so nice and elegant and was just using fundamentals. I think that turned out very nicely, the solution, and I'm pretty proud of it. And I can only come up with solutions like this by practicing each and every day. And Brian is definitely one very good source to do so. I, for myself, am an avid Brian user. It's an interactive learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry. No matter what it is you're striving for to learn in the STEM field, Brian definitely got something up their sleeve for you. Ghost Blackboard, shut it up. <laughs> and f for example, just the thing with the 
biquadratische Gleichung, as I called it here in this video, can be visualized so nicely by taking a look at the graph of this quartic polynomial and then taking a look at the graph of what we got here. And you're going to see that those two are going to meet in the same roots on their graph, which is very elegant. And Brian does this all the time. If you take a look at their calculus course, competitive mathematics courses, their geometry courses, their graphics, interactive things everywhere that you can play around with. Use your own two hands and be active on your computer. Learn something new by doing. It's an amazing concept and it works out splendidly. And if this feels like something for you, if you want to try out Brain for yourself, if I made you curious, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash HandleMaths. With it, you're going to get free access to a big portion of Brain already, but more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they already have available on their website and how much they are adding on a regular basis. It's a crazy good experience and I can just recommend it to everyone. Just try it out and you will see for yourself that Brian is seriously worth a monthly or annual subscription. It's amazing. So check it out and support the channel this way. And yeah, after that, don't forget to check out uh, me playing around with my wood and also Stamage.eu for handcrafted products. And until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a German Mass Olympia 2001 day. See ya!